lot of fun. Uh, I will let these gentlemen introduce uh, themselves to you um, and uh, give them a, a little background on what you've done before you start this podcast. Well, we'll start with me, yeah. Lamont Hayes, um, native Detroiter. Uh, been in the music business for about 20 years now. Um, who did you work for in the music business? Well, you know what? We can start my very first job with a company called MCA Records. Which is funny because you guys, I'm sorry to cut them off, but it's funny because you guys talked about Mary J. Blige. Mary J. Oh, oh, yes. and, and the mind used to bring Mary J. Blige to the station we, all, we, all, all the time. time. Yeah. And, and, and used to treat Mary J. Blige very well. That's right. my people. That's people. Right. Better than his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, oh, 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 honey, I love you, honey. Mary has some people that would make you treat. Right, 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 right. Oh, we had some fun with that. Oh, yeah. Fun. No, we love Mary. We love, you know, Mary, she's going through a tough time, but you know what? Um, you know, her new album, which, you oh, know, oh. if you don't have it, definitely go he's get it, good. stream Look, it, he's download still, it. He's still, still working. working. He's still working. <laughs> yeah. for right, 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 absolutely. Right. Um, but there was also this this company that I worked for that was really near and dear to my heart. It was called Motown Records. Um, I was under the, the, the guidance of a guy who didn't do as well as we would have liked, named Andre Harrell, who was... Right. You know, the guy who, who did marry at Uptown. But when he was at Motown, it, it was a really interesting time. Um, but I learned a lot. And it kind of what brings us here, you know, today when we talk about our podcast, which is three black guys with the mic. Well, we have myself, you know, where we focus a lot on hip-hop and politics. Um, and the hip-hop piece is sometimes it's not about music. You know, we even in a political space, you know, we call him B-Rock, a.k.a. number 44, a.k.a. Barack Obama. He is hip-hop. Chocolate you know what I mean? Jesus, chocolate Jesus. Chocolate baby. Jesus, you know what I mean? We saw the way that he walked. He walked hip-hop. He bounced the basketball, hip-hop. Um, the way he loves on his wife is hip-hop. So that's kind of... And he didn't cheat. Oh, not at all. Oh, not at all. Oh, no. there's, there's nobody out there he's treating better than his wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, that's Michelle Obama. It's hard, right? When you got all the resources. Oh, there's always a Becky with a good hair. It's oh, a, there's no. always a Becky with a good hair. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 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 Kelly and Conway with a good hair. You're the second member of the group. You've met Lamont and now... Yo, this is up. This is Maynard, and uh, and you a long time ago, twenty years ago, I used to work for Tune Up and and, and Mason here at the yeah, station. Yeah. So yeah. this is like a homecoming. They used to tell me what they were and weren't going to do, and I just said, okay, no <laughs> problem. Of course, that was the same guy that said it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Maynard, uh, in, in, what is your role on the podcast team? Yeah, we. I mean, I think the three of us basically have the same role, which is to agitate debate. And to make, um, to bring some some light to it. They, there used to be a commercial a long time ago. When we were all younger. We heard this when E. F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. And the thing was, E. F. Hutton was never talking to us, so we weren't listening. And the political space, um, we are t tuning in, but they still aren't speaking to us. They're talking around us. They talk about us. They don't. They talk at us, but they don't speak to us. So what we do is we look for a way to take a topic in politics and put a hip hop lens on it. For instance, we discuss all the time, like how is Don Trump any different from 50 Cent? Like at the end of the day, all he did was have 16 diss records against the Republicans and one against Hillary. She, he dissed them and got where he's going. And he was using the, the 50 Cent diss record Formal. mentality yeah. to get where he was going. And that's kind of how we, we try to view politics to break it down and make it so that we are digesting it in a fashion that um, is, is palatable for our folks. Lamont and Maynard, we now turn to the third member of the group who uh, who always seems to be able to find the right formula of putting groups together. <laughs> I, always, I always cheer for the teams you put together. Uh, yes, but, uh, t tell them your name and tell them what you used to do. Um, you man, let me just them. first uh, begin by saying uh, thank you so very much for allowing us to come on, Mason. You are a legend in this city. Uh, I've looked up for you uh, to you for a very long time, long time. Um, and you know, I've, and and done my best to try to follow in your footsteps. Not from just a uh, personality perspective, but as an activist perspective, because you have done so much for the community beyond you know the the radio space. And and to you know go to you know Lamont's um, point off air, you should be commended for that because you know when you become an icon, you move beyond you know, the radio space. When you are impacting the community, then that's when you become an icon, and you are that in this space. Um, I segue that to say I've been in radio for, since I was 16 years old, uh, I've worked here, you know, at Radio One, been honored to, you know, work here, worked here for 
uh, a very long time. So I've been in radio for a very long time. A lot of you guys hear my commercials. I do um, a lot of uh, voiceover work. You know, <laughs> so a lot of my commercials, a lot of concerts. You know, a lot of concerts. You know, trying out is, uh, you know, is, is, is my, is, you know. So my goal, I mean, in my role in the, in this uh, in this podcast is to be the mediator. So if you look at us as a, you know, Skip and Shannon, or you know. Uh, um, uh, they don't like uh, Stephen A. Smith, but Stephen A. Smith, and you know, or first take or whatever. So my 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 job is to mediate, you know, Lamont and Maynard in regards to the uh, debate space. Did and you so did that, you do the Olympia um, comedy get down? No, I didn't do that one. No, okay. that one that was above my pay grade. No, <laughs> no, no, that was a bit above you, my, you, you know my, my 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 pay grade, but. Um, so that's what I do. My, my goal is to be able to keep the 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 the, the, the uh, conversation on task. You know, keep it focused and make sure they call me the show runner. My job is to be able yeah. to make sure what we're talking about, you know, is uh, important and impactful to the listeners yeah. that we have. So now, now, that's funny, uh, Maynard. You worked for Spud. No, I was. Oh, was, I was he, was he not here? Yeah, I was yeah, here. We, 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 yeah, yeah, we worked together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you were in the building with him in Lamont. You worked with Spud. Well, I kind of. Well, was you he, know what? What they here? call it? I worked Spud. You know, Spud. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. 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 You know, no, and, 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 and let me no, clarify some that. Some of those cases are still open. No, no, no. Let me clarify that. Are still open. You know, Spud. Spud was at the helm. He was the guy that they called the program director. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I was the guy that. You know, try to bring my, records and get records yeah. played. And I, I tried my best to verbally twist his arm the best I could. And this is legally, by the way. Yes, right. ver verbally, right. verbally, right. verbally. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's, it's a fascinating com uh, combination of people. I just, Spud just overwhelmed me with a very calm voice. But just for the listening audience, <laughs> when, this is the guy that you hear on stuff like this. Oh, God. <laughs> There you go. I'm I, sure I, Quentin I, Perry will thank you for that. Mason, Mason, Mason. Exciting thank voices. You. Thank you very much. Yes. Mason, man. Oh, you know, I've known you a long time. And, you know, when, when I was here working with y'all, you, you, didn't, you didn't let me in the room. I just, I just want to ring the bell. Or, or bang the tent. Can, I, can I just? I mean, can I? There you go. Can I, can I, can I, can I get the tambourine, too? I want the tambourine, too. Oh, my God. Oh, ah, made it. We made it. So this is interesting. You you you, you have a, a take on the world from a hip hop perspective. Absolutely. Um, what will the next topic you will tackle? So yesterday we uh, recorded. We had the opportunity to be able to record into the in, in the Mix One Factory. We typically all of our episodes drop on Tuesday. Okay. So our conversation on Tuesday, of course, is going to be about the health care bill. Um, you know, we we debated. You know, do you think uh, you know that we should repeal and replace it? We also talked about Hillary Clinton in regards to do you think that on October twenty seventh she would have won the presidency had you know there would have never been no James Comey letter or anything like that. What, would she would she have won, Maynard? No. Uh oh. And and is 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 Donald Trump correct on the health care bill? No. So what, so the reason why. What she, do you hate about it? What do I hate about the health care bill? Yeah. Because it's um, the whole health care bill basically came down to they just want to get rid of Barack's name. Right. They they don't, they had no for idea. You, for you, that's the biggest thing they tried to do. They just they want to delegitimize Barack Obama, L and it's not really governing. L Lamont, was she the right candidate for the Democratic Party coming into this election, Hillary Clinton? At the time, I want to say yes. Um, Bernie would not conform. Bernie did not want to be put in the box. You know, Bernie, of course, would have been the superstar that could have closed the deal. I mean, it's just about that's what we had on the shelf. And when I say we, because I am a registered Democrat. So I think that at the time, you know, Mater says this all the time, is that um, she should have been out, you know, working a little bit harder instead of, what did you call it, having card parties with, you know, right, right, at people's right. homes. You know what I mean? So a lot of it was her race to lose. Not necessarily, and I like to call him T-Rump. I don't call him Donald Trump. You know what I mean? I call him T-Rump. <laughs> so, you know, um, and we also have this discussion about, you know, the man, Donald Trump, and the office of the presidency is two different things. You, Spud, you know, he mentioned earlier, Donald Trump and 50 Cent, not a lot of difference. Right. Explain it. it. You know, what Donald Trump was able to do is to be able to, and this goes back to, you know, Hillary Clinton. She did not have a clear message. That's, in my opinion, the reason why she lost. You know, she didn't show up. 
Hands down, Donald Trump outworked her. In regards to comparing 50 Cent and Donald Trump, you know, Donald Trump was able to bully his way in. So when you talk right. about, you know, little Marco, you're talking about Lion Ted, you're talking about Crooked Hillary, these things, you know, play into your psyche. And so what he was able to do was to make people believe that these people were crooked and he was the one. Yet that, that you know, everyone else is not going to, you know, work. When he called, uh, you know, Jeb Bush weak, that automatically discredited Jeb Bush, all, all, you know, period. So he was like, oh, there's no reason for, you know, us to even think about Jeb Bush. He's weak. There's no even reason. And then who was the guy? I don't know if it was Rand Paul. He was like, I don't even know why you're even on this stage. Right. That He just discredited everybody. And right. that is what 50 Cent was able to do when he first came out. When 50 Cent was, you know, when he went off of, on uh, Kanye West and he just destroyed Ja Rule's career, you know, that's the parallel between 50 Cent and, and, and Donald Trump. Revolt TV, Maynard, what do you think of? <sighs> um, I think what we're doing right now in this, in this space, and people often give, we try to give ourselves a lot of credit. We got to get more done before we start, you know, popping bottles and saying we've made it. But it's a good first start, and I, I'm excited to see where it goes after this. But Lamont, your your thoughts on Revolt TV? Um, I have a lot of family at Revolt, so you know I'm not going to say anything bad. <laughs> I think what's very important and what Puff has to do, he needs cable people. You know, there's a you know there's a thing. I mean, he needs three black guys with a mic. No, he, yeah. well we'll talk about that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's in the works, but he he needs cable people. It, it's very hard to run a cable network, as even Oprah found out. Because if you remember in the beginning of OWN, is that Oprah was very specific of the programming that she would not have. That's right. And you know and what? now it's all on. Absolutely, Everything because in. you know she saw Tyler's Matrix, and she said, you know what, Tyler? Come on over, show me how to do this. And you know, now OWN has probably some of the highest rated shows that they've ever, you know, of course had. And a lot of their competition are trying to figure out how do we get, you know, op uh, get OWN. So I think it's the same thing with Revolt. I mean, the reality is that, you know, um, I would have to go. <laughs> things to all people. So you can't be, you know, EDM, you can't be, you know, uh, R&B. You, you got to know wh who you're, you know, speaking of. That's what MTV did, you know, in, in the beginning. And so I think that with Viceland, it's the same thing. You know, Viceland is about the millennials. And so their content is so on point by telling stories with, um, you know, the, the, the weed educator is a good <laughs> show, as well as, you know, uh, Noisy it. is a good show. You yeah. know, so they tell the stories, you know, of, of everybody. So they got, a, I think they got a little bit more of a clear, you know, con you know, concise message. And that's what our goal is. Our goal is to be able to have a clear, concise message. Our goal is to be able to educate the hip hop community on politics. So because that way we can be able to get more involved. When I think a lot of people are not going to the polls because they assume that either somebody is going to win, i.e. Uh, Hillary Clinton, or either somebody is not telling the truth, you know, they're, and I think that, you know, we have to be able to be more educated when it comes to the political process, locally and nationally. Right now, some of our conversation is about what's going to happen in 2017. Yeah. We're also talking about the local mayoral, you know, conversation, as well as, you know, the city clerk, as well as, you know, city council. I mean, those things are important because when people know then they will start to show up. And if we can start to educate people and start to have people say, oh, I understand a little bit more, and we can do it in a very funny way, and if we can talk to my son, and we can talk to millennials, and we can talk to you know, people in our generations as well, you know, in regards to the hip hop and how those two things you know, tie together, I mean, Steve Stout said it best, there is a direct you know, correlation between 1520 Cedric Avenue, you know, the birthplace of hip hop, and 1600 Pennsylvania you know, Avenue. Those two things go you know, together. Lamont said it you know, as well. You, 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 everything in, in hip hop correlates to you know, politics. So we try to bridge those two things together. Uh, we're funny, uh, you know, we have fun. You know, they use a lot of, you know, explicit language. I don't. I'm um, sure it's entertaining. Uh, <laughs> how, how can people get the podcast before we wrap? All right. Thank you so very much again, Mason. Um, so iTunes, um, our Facebook page is uh, Three Black Guys. I mean, uh, Facebook.com slash Three Black Guys with a mic. That's where most people, you know, go three to hear. Three Black Guys with a mic. Right. You know, so they go to the Facebook page. They can be a part of the conversation. So a lot of people, you know, get in on the conversations that we have. Uh, our website is threeblackguyswithamic.com. Um, so any of your, you know, uh, um, app, you know, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, you know, iTunes, so forth and so uh, Very good. I do want to say a lot of people didn't know. Uh, when we went to Fairlane for someone being killed and over uh, 100,000 people showed up and they cut off freeways, 
Spud was right in the middle of that. He, he encouraged his audience to be there, and because we were able to combine on that without even talking, right. and so we brought the entire city to Fairlane, right. and the governor, and they had the helicopters right. and closed down freeways. Sure did. Uh, people need to know that. That was a, a, a big deal and a big thing that you did to show up for Detroit that way. Yeah, thank and, you. And we got some stuff accomplished. Ramon, thank you for always being uh, uh, the super professional in the record industry. Uh, it was people like you that I really got a chance to, to understand it in a different way. You were the you were the, the youngest that I ever saw yep. in it when I came to Detroit. Absolutely. You were the new breed. Yes. Uh, of, of, and then, and you were the last breed. This is the last breed of yeah. record. Very right. true. Very yeah, true. I know they still have some now, but it's not the same. It's yeah, absolutely. Same. Yeah, it's, it's changed a little bit. I mean, a lot of different industries are consolidating right, and, and, right. and downsizing. But but I definitely appreciate it. And I wanted to, you know, to echo what Spud said is that, you know, what you have been doing and what you continue to do, it, it, it's an honor for us to sit here and, you know, just have this conversation because I think sometimes we don't celebrate one another as we should. And I think, you know... One day I'm going to come on your podcast. Well, oh, no, we got on. No, you just did. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, said, Lamont will let me cuss, damn it. <laughs> Maynard, thank you guys, Yo, man. man. Thanks. I, I really you appreciate you, man. This is great. Thank you so much. And let me, can I, you know, just give, you know, Miko, I love Miko. Thank you so very much. Angie and I do a lot of concerts together, and she rips yeah. it, you know, all the time. <laughs> and we you. would not, you know, we would just be stupid if we didn't give Tune Up no props. Tune Up is... Well, you know, hey, hey, Tune, 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 tune Up is... Right this morning. Tune up was right this morning. You right you know. Know. Thanks, man. Well, well, thank you again, man. Right. Well, you still work here. I know you think you're dope. <laughs> <laughs>